Butch, tomboy, lesbian, feminist, fragile, crusader, unladylike, suffragette, masculine. Some people run from adversity while others run through it. Catherine Sitzer took a stand by running both a real and metaphorical marathon. Catherine Sitzer ran 26.2 miles in the Boston Marathon, and she continues to run in the pursuit of equality for women's long-distance running. Catherine Sitzer's stand in the 1967 Boston Marathon was a pivotal turning point for empowering women's long-distance running and changing gender role stereotypes. As a manifestation of society's fear and insecurities of people's abilities, stereotypes existed as a way to suppress equality. The 1960s was a unique decade filled with different social movements that were challenging stereotypes. Before and during the early 20th century, society expected women to be domestic, with the responsibilities in the house and to their children. Women had been taught that they were inferior to men, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Society thought that sports would compromise women's gender roles. The idea of running long distance was always considered, you know, very questionable for women because, you know, an arduous activity would, would mean that you're going to get big legs and grow a mustache and hair on your chest and your uterus was going to fall out. It wasn't until the late 1800s when women were finally able to participate in sports. Even then, women could only participate in sports considered feminine. In the early half of the 20th century, women were not restricted in sports by physical limitations, but instead by social standards and gender roles. A few women like Babe Didrikson, Billie Jean King, and Wilma Rudolph challenged these stereotypes by being involved in competitive sports. These women made progress for women in sports, but not for women in long distance running. In 1928, women's track and field was added to the Olympics, but the longest event was an 800 meter. In 1966, Bobby Gibb ran the Boston Marathon. She was the first woman to ever run in a marathon race, but she did so unregistered. While she achieved a great milestone for women's running, her lack of registration made society dismiss her accomplishment at the time. Running is a metaphor for life. You have to do it for yourself, but you can empower the people around you. Catherine Switzer wanted to empower herself, and in doing so, she empowered female runners. While the rest of society listened to the stereotypes of the time, Catherine Switzer took a stand and ran right through them. In Catherine Switzer's autobiography, Marathon Woman, she wrote, I was told it was important always to make a better place for the next generation. It was an exciting world where I could be both feminine and strong, determined and dreaming, methodical and daring, and at the same time live up to my family's expectation of my improving a situation for the next generation. I came from a long line of pioneers, not famous but indefatigable. I didn't want to let them down. When Catherine wanted to join a sport, she originally chose cheerleading, but her dad told her, life is for participating, not spectating. Catherine's running journey began when she was trying to make the field hockey team. Her dad told her to run a mile a day. She made the field hockey team and felt that running was magic. She continued to run to prepare for college. Catherine joined Syracuse University's men's cross country team since there wasn't a women's team. Her coach at Syracuse University was Arnie Briggs. As they would run, Arnie would tell stories of running the Boston Marathon 15 times. One day, Catherine decided she was done hearing his stories. She wanted to live them. Catherine Switzer's running coach does not believe that a woman could run a marathon, despite Bobby Gibb having run it a year earlier. Arnie said to Catherine, if any woman could do it, you could, but you'd have to prove it to me. If you ran the distance in practice, I'd be the first to take you to Boston. Faced with the coach's doubt, she ran 26 miles, and then because she felt it was too easy, she ran another 5 miles. She stood up to her coach's doubt and insecurities. Catherine's innocent endeavor then became more than just a stand against her coach. It became a stand against society's stereotypes. Catherine registered for the 1967 Boston Marathon with her coach Arnie Briggs, her boyfriend Tom Miller, and teammate John Leonard, under her initials K.V. Switzer. She used her initials not to avoid getting attention, but to avoid having her name spelled wrong, and because she thought it was cool. Despite her coach's doubt, it never occurred to Catherine that running the Boston Marathon, a stereotypical men's race, would be a problem. No one in the world to say a woman could not run the Boston Marathon. The day of the race was cold and drizzling. All of the participants wore big sweatsuits, so Catherine Switzer blended in with the crowd. Catherine picked up her number, 261, and pinned it onto her sweatshirt. Then she lined up at the start of the race, wearing lipstick and not hiding her femininity. The officials checked out her number, but did not realize she was a woman. 
The first several miles were filled with cheers for Catherine. Other runners would come by, they would say, oh, it's a girl. And they were so excited. The world's most famous foot race even attracts a leggy lady, Kay Switzer of Syracuse. Then around mile four, a press truck drove up and started taking pictures of Catherine. This truck was the race directors. One of them was a feisty character by the name of Jock Semple. He just stopped the bus, jumped off, and ran after me. Suddenly I turned and he just grabbed me and screamed at me, get the hell out of my race and give me those numbers. And then he started clawing at me, trying to, trying to rip my numbers off. And I was so surprised. And all of a sudden, my boyfriend, Big Tom, gave Jock the most incredible crossbody block and sent Jock flying. And all of this happened in front of the press truck. The journalist got very aggressive. What are you trying to prove? You know, are you a suffragette? Are you a crusader? Whatever that is, you know? And I said, what? I'm just trying to run. Catherine had never really known opposition until that moment when the race official yelled at her. At first, she was filled with humiliation and anger, but then it became something more. It became about taking a stand. From Catherine's words, if I quit, nobody would ever believe that women have the capability to run the marathon distance. If I quit, everybody would say it was a publicity stunt. If I quit, it would set women's sports back, way back, instead of forward. If I quit, I'd never run Boston. If I quit, Jock Semple and all those like him would win. My fear and humiliation turned to anger. Opposition tends to create the greatest of leaders and examples. Uh, I turned to Arnie and I said, Arnie, you know, I've gotten you into a lot of mess here, I guess. But I said, I don't know where you stand on this. And I said, I'm going to finish this race on my hands and my knees if I have to. Because nobody believes that I can do this. And suddenly I realize, you know, if I don't finish this race, then everybody's going to believe women can't do it and that they don't deserve to be here and that they're incapable. I've got to finish this race. For 26 miles, Catherine ran. She ran when she was cold and tired, even when there was nobody cheering. She took a stand that was filled with courage, perseverance, dedication, and commitment. I finished in four hours, 20 minutes. That race changed my life. Experiences change people. Sometimes they make people sit down, and sometimes they inspire people to stand up taller and run right through adversity. Challenging the all-male stereotype of the Boston Marathon was an enlightening experience. Catherine realized during the race that she wasn't exceptional in her athletic abilities, but just her opportunities and courage. In a moment, Catherine knew what she wanted to do with her life. She wanted to empower women and give women the same opportunities she had. Catherine has spent the last 50 years of her life promoting social change and empowering women to run. She helped create the Avon International Running Circuit of Women's Races. We wound up organizing 400 races in 27 countries and used the data and statistics from those events to lobby the International Olympic Committee and got the women's marathon into the Olympic Games in 1984. We know if we can empower women, they can do anything. Running USA reported in 2015, women comprised 44% of marathon finishers. This percentage is up from the 10% in 1980. Also, the record for the fastest women's marathon is 2 hours, 15 minutes and 25 seconds, which is only 12 minutes and 28 seconds off the men's record. Women have reached this record in a shorter period than it took men to reach the same record. Some scientists even believe women have the capability to be faster than men, but only time will tell. Catherine's bib number 261 is iconicized for it stands for being fearless in adversity. The effects of Catherine Switzer's stand are still being felt today. Women were officially allowed to run in the Boston Marathon in 1972. One stand makes a hero. To continue to stand is to become a legend. Catherine took a stand once again in the 2017 Boston Marathon, wearing her iconic 261 bib number on the 50th anniversary of her original stand. Throughout Catherine Switzer's life, she's had numerous titles runner, speaker, author, commentator. She has also been called many names. Catherine has never let any one label define her. It's her ability to fit the definition of multiple labels that has truly made her great. She redefined what it meant to be a woman. While others let stereotypical words define them, Catherine took a stand and became more than the words of haters. She became the words of legends. Hero! Revolutionary! Strong, leader, game changer, pioneer, empowering, inspirational, icon, legend. Ah!